you have this fundamental technique, you're familiar with it, you're going along tube, you hear a lot of knocking, takes a long time, you have to stay still. Um, so, I mean, which has a lot, I mean, we, you have to consider that piece when you're thinking about how would we use this as an asset. It's not simply, you know, just let's request that lab test. It means someone has to go in that magnet and lay there for a long time, um, perhaps be claustrophobic, perhaps not fit, lots of things that can um, really limit how well we can really use something like that as an asset. But again, within magnetic, <coughs> within MRI, you have the ability to sensitize that signal that produces the image. You can sensitize <coughs> different properties of the tissue. The fundamental property is something called T1 and T2. These are natural um, properties of, of uh, water molecules that have to do with how well they, res how quickly they respond to the magnetic field and how quickly they restore equilibrium after you turn the magnetic field on. This basic property, it creates contrast in the image because those are tissue specific behaviors. Um, so that's at the, jit, at the heart of MRI. We can inject a contrast agent and do something called contrast enhanced MRI. We use that in breast cancer. It's actually, you, you must use a contrast agent when you perform um, MRI to detect breast cancer. Then there are techniques where you can weight it to water diffusion. Um, you can weight it, to, you can look at, we, we look at the most, uh, um, um, the highest concentration proton species, which is in, in fat and water tissue, so that we can get that high anatomic detail. But you can also tune in to other um, protein-containing metabolites or other nuclei that you can make MRI sensitive to. Then, the, uh, but, but the, um, the concentrations of those metabolites are what, much smaller, they're harder to detect, image quality goes down, resolution goes down, so you, you take that hit. So usually we do those, we do the standard water lipid MRI so that we can get a nice crisp anatomic imaging, and then we add other techniques. Um, Near-infrared optical imaging, it's something that people have been looking at forever, but it's actually a technology that now is, um, I think, advanced enough that you, you can start to think of it in a practical way. And uh, positron emission tomography is also another um, very exciting technique used a lot now in oncology, and um, it, bas it basically has, the, it, while the spatial resolution is not great, what it does do is that you are looking at specific molecular targets, so you can be much more specific about what you're seeing in the image. Um, just, I, I think I'm actually in the interest of time going to go past this, but there, these are there are ways to quantify even with digital X-ray um, to take ways of normalizing the signal either with an external or internal reference and get a quantitative value out, out of the um, out of a mammogram, and that is one way we know that density can predict for risk. Um, there are ways now to pick <coughs> these instruments and, and develop software so that we can actually extract numeric data from um, digital mammograms. And that's work by John Shepard, the slide that I just showed, he's here at UCSF. And then there are the 3D techniques. These are very exciting. Some of these images, uh, technologies look very, um, the resolution is superior to uh, playing to digital, full field digital mammography, but these instrumentations are not fully developed, the technology of them. They're really not fully developed. Um, and they suffer from a few problems um, that, are, that uh, engineers are trying to address right now, and we may see them come into fruition. But um, for one, in, in the um, tomosynthesis systems, they found um, that this, there could be reduced sensitivity to calcification, so it's not quite performing at the level of digital MAMO. Um, also, with the CT approaches, it's difficult to instrument, uh, to build that instrumentation so that you can see the chest wall and axilla very clearly. Um, MRI, as I mentioned, it has a clinical role in primary breast cancer, and you must use it with a gadolinium contrast agent in order to enhance the cancers and to identify them relative to background. It's already established itself as being more effective than the existing um, uh, methods to stage, to, to show, demonstrate the extent of cancer in the breast. What we don't know is that that has uh, led to improved surgical outcomes. If anything, it may have been, uh, what we're seeing right now is that what it's leading to is an escalation of surgical management as opposed to uh, more appropriate and more well-defined surgical management. Um, and then uh, the advanced techniques that I mentioned. So I mentioned these in particular. So these are, are layered onto the anatomical imaging that we get from MRI. And the three major techniques that we use are um, the dynamic contrast enhanced um, MRI. So 
the patient's in the magnet, we take uh, images, we inject a contrast agent, we look for a blush or an enhancement in areas, and the more that you see right after the injection, the more suspicious that area is for cancer. And it can show you, demonstrate the, the cancer very nicely um, as a picture. But there's actually a time course of that pattern of enhancement. And if you image fast enough, you can start to, to look at what that uh, signal enhancement time course uh, is. And from that, it's basically tracer kinetics. You can really, you can extract from that signal intensity curve the values of um, the, the, the flux of contrast in and out of tissue. And so you can apply models to the imaging data, and you can extract quantities that have to do with the pharmacokinetics of the contrast agent. And those should be reflective of properties of the tissue, like the, the permeability and the blood volume. Um, diffusion weighted imaging is a, is a fairly easy um, technique to implement, but it does lead to image degradation. Um, it doesn't involve a contrast agent, and what you're doing really is sensitizing the signal to uh, free motion of water. And so you can, you can calibrate that so you're actually sensitive to um, the, 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 random, the random motion of water, and if the water is experiencing boundaries, like cellular boundaries, then you'll see that reflected in the diffusion coefficient. So we can measure that in vivo and anatomically, and that can also give us a sense of the cellularity of tissue, and if we're using drug treatment, what the change in cellularity um, that results. And then um, MR spectroscopy is a much more technically complex um, approach. It's used a lot in the brain and the prostate. Um, it's very challenging in the breast. I'll say a little more about it, but essentially, let's look at a, a protein containing metabolite <coughs> other than water or lipid. Um, we, in this case, choline, which is associated with uh, cell membrane synthesis and proliferation. So again, it's a potential marker. Okay, um, as I mentioned, the DCE MRI, just briefly, you would take a se sequence of pictures after injecting contrast, and you, then if you can go at any point, draw a small region at any point, and you can map out the signal intensity change over time. The technical requirements for this um, are at, a little at odds with what you want to do in a con in the, for the clinical use of breast MRI. So um, you need to be in the 10 second temporal resolution, which means you have to keep reacquiring the data over and over again with very rapidly. By reducing the time you spend acquiring the image, you actually drop, you have to give up something like the coverage or the resolution or the ability to use something we call fat suppression to make a kind of a sharper um, picture of tissue. So all of these things have to um, have to be um, compromised. Um, you also have to make some additional measurements that have to go into the model. So there are some complexities to really pushing contrast-enhanced MRI of the breast to the point where it, it is a, a, is it a physi physiologically based uh, measurement that you're making. So th that has implications for, again, how we can apply it. Diffusion imaging, this is, this is a standard uh, T, what we call T1-weighted anatomic imaging after we've given contrast, and you can see what I've, I've been referring to as an enhancement or a blush, and that's, that's on that basis is the radiologist will make a diagnosis and size the tumor and describe it otherwise. Um, the same patient in the magnet, if, if you've been in the MRI magnets, you know that, that you'll hear knocking for several minutes at a time, then there'll be some quiet time, it'll start up again, a new sequence, we're running a new sequence. So we would run this exam, and then we would run one for diffusion. The diffusion images are much less uh, quality images. And from there, we take a sequence of them, which I actually think this, this one. So here's the, the T1 weighted image, the standard with the contrast. And then we run another sequence where we've weighted um, with the gradients um, to different levels of diffusion. And then we calculate on a <coughs> pixel by pixel basis, same pixel here and same in this one, um, the diffusion coefficient, and this is a mapping then of that number. So this is called a, a ADC map, but it does tell you something, it tells you something fr from a biology, the property is different than what we're learning here. This is reflective of vascularity, um, and the diffusion coefficient is more reflective of the cellularity of the tumor. And, um, and in uh, several, there's a number of published studies that people that have applied uh, diffusion weighted imaging in the breast, but essentially what you see is that the ADC value, with, this is actually in response to treatment. You'll see that the values in tumors go up with, treat, with chemotherapy treatment and actually go down in normal tissue, get a buildup of fibrosis and actually increase cellularity, um, um, dense, density of, of cells in treated tissue that is reflected in the ADC.
see. So it, it can be, you know, presumably be used as a marker.